Okay, we're going to go over how to increase your number of patients. Um, my backstory is um, when I started, there was a doctor, uh, Dr. Ledesma, I don't know if you're Dr. Ledesma, but he was uh, one of my attendings and he, he retired, uh, he didn't retire, he moved to Arizona and then he had a full, full block of patients and I got all of his patients. And so I was super busy from the beginning because it was just him and my partner now, which is uh, Neil Feldman. And the, the thing is, is, I didn't market from the beginning. And that was my really my number one error. Even though I liked marketing, I was just way too busy. I, I, I didn't, there was no need. Um, but that is an error. So even if you join a practice or enter a practice where you're super busy, you have to be careful because things, things can dry up, especially if you're looking to grow and you're adding a second and a third doctor. Uh, if they don't know about you, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, so also you can't increase your per visit value um, if you don't have patients to provide more value to. Okay. So let's talk about a few ways you can do this. First of all, it's with referrals. Um, so in the beginning, uh, the Dr. Ledesma that was with me, he introduced me to the other doctors around, which was a good thing. Um, and that was a, the right thing that we did. So, but I think having kind of structured time in your schedule or even having a staff member call to schedule like meet and greets, or even nowadays with Zoom, just to introduce yourself to the doctors. Um, doing that, I think is an important way of, of getting referrals um, so getting referrals from other uh, centers of influence, that would be like primary cares, germs, peds, vasculars, shoe stores, things like that. Um, going down and doing a talk for the shoe store, uh, being available if, if the patients at the shoe store have any questions or other people have any questions, just making friends, genuinely making friends. Um, also other family members, I always ask, um, are there any other family members that have issues? Or if someone brings them in, I ask how their feet are. And if it's something simple, I have them just take their shoe off and I'll take a quick look and try to help them out. So those are ways of, of getting referrals and from patients and just taking care of them and saying, at the end, I give them a card and I say, you know, it's been a pleasure treating you. I'd like to ask you two things. Could you give us an online review? And just, would you send more people just like yourself to the office? Uh, send nice people. I think that's an important thing. Uh, marketing, uh, internal and external. Um, so you want to market to what you want to see. So the story about wounds is you don't market to what you don't want to see. So in the beginning, I thought I wanted to do wounds. Like I even started a podcast called Heal My Foot Wound Fast. And I was all this thing. And I don't like wounds. I never, and I, I, I kind of felt obligated to do wounds and I didn't really like it. So you have to be careful what, what you're marketing for. So now I don't market to that. I market to what I, what I want to see. I market to shockwave, to orthotics, to plantar fasciitis, things like that. So speak to only what you want to see. I can't emphasize that enough such as videos, like do videos on that topic, YouTube shorts, procedures, record all that stuff uh, to increase your patients. Now, I do not get a lot of patients from YouTube. Um, I, 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 I get some once in a while. I get most of our, our patients from primary cares. So being in touch with them and then doing good work for their patients and then online reviews. Uh, many of our patients have uh, give us online reviews. We have a couple of automated processes. One's called Patient Education Genius, and the other one is called Patient Pop. And both of them are kind of for online reviews. Um, advertising, certainly advertising can bring in new patients. Um, that's something that's helpful. Please send your, your friends and family, give them a card. And I would recommend trying to become famous in your area of expertise. Now, I know this sounds kind of odd. Like none of us, we want to be famous. Um, you know, I don't want to be a YouTube star, but we can be famous in our little sphere of, of influence, like regarding feet, in Worcester, Massachusetts, it's probably pretty nice for me to be famous amongst that little sphere, okay? So the way you can become famous is, is to like write a book and put a book out there. Um, do YouTube videos on different topics that are related to feet, okay? Uh, collaborate with stores. Um, a couple of things that I'm collaborating now with like uh, pathology, there's a pathology rep and there's also a vein rep that I, I'm giving my things for Swift, that I'm doing Swift marketing, and they're going and giving it to their other doctors that they know. So they're kind of marketing for me. So these are ways to increase uh, patients. And then, you know, I think I've mentioned as well, just doing good, good, good work for the patients that you have and, and for the, the coaches and other people in that, in that sphere that they have. Okay. Um, increasing the number of patients. Um, Add a sign that says, yes, we're taking new patients. It's cheap, costs $20, $30 at Staples. But patients ask, are you like taking new patients? Do you, do you see patients uh, that, that need to be seen? And when marketing, uh, make marketing your hobby. This is something that I did uh, a long time ago is I made marketing my hobby. I really enjoy marketing. My favorite podcast, if you want to listen to one besides my podcast, is called Magnetic Marketing Podcast. There's a little link here. 
Um, and when do you ask for referrals? I always ask for referrals when they're finished and they're satisfied. I say, hey, is there anything we could have done better? And they just say no. And, and so I, and then I, I say, uh, when they say, how can I thank you, doctor? And I say, please, someone, send someone else just as nice as you. And that's how I hand them a card. Um, another thing I do is when I go do surgery, I bring all the surgical patients uh, a little present. So basically it's a little popcorn with a bag and a little gift that I put inside of there, but the staff really like it. And on there, I have a little, little circle with like post-op instructions with a QR code, which is a, like a QR code that goes to our website. And it reduces uh, abundantly the number of questions that patients ask after surgery. Uh, and then finally, increasing the number of patients would be the newsletter. And I, on there, I ask them to send new patients. I, I might highlight patients, highlight referral sources, highlight other local businesses. And then when I highlight them, I'll send that to the local business so that they'll share that with their center of influence. They'll send that with their, their like Instagram and their, their LinkedIn and their Facebook and things like that. And then making it fun with competitions. We recently did a, a competition where I was going to give a couple of pairs of shoes. We sell Lem's shoes here because no one else does around. And um, for whoever kind of put a review on within a week period, we send them a uh, pair of shoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them come in on a day I'm there and take a picture with them and then publish that in the newsletter and give them a pair of shoes. So it's kind of like some notoriety. Okay. Um, next, we're going to focus on doing more durable medical equipment. So DME in your office and how to kind of focus on that. Once again, this is going back to doing the per visit value, increasing the per visit value with durable medical equipment. Uh, so hopefully you guys will find that oh, that's a little foretaste of what's going to be there next. Okay. 